Hello again everybody, this is Kevin. Uh, today I'm going to show you some really fun uh, workflows using one of my personal favorite systems, the PDS4K. Uh, a lot of questions have come up lately about the PDS4K, specifically with the layers, how to assign them, uh, can you do pips, and all of that. So today I'm going to cover it. Uh, I'm traveling today, I'm in a hotel, so I don't have my fancy buttons to play a fancy video. Uh, just imagine what was going on right now. So, you log into a PDS4K, and unlike the other Event Master systems, you're going to notice that everything is already kind of set up for you. The system can run in two major modes. It can be in 4K at 60 mode or 4K at 30 mode. In 4K at 60 mode, you get two screen destinations. In 4K at 30 mode, you get four screen destinations. Now, the cool thing is the resolutions don't have to be 4K at 60 or 4K at 30, but essentially that's what you get. To change the mode, you're going to click on the actual name of the PDS unit itself. This is going to change the contextual adjust tab in the upper right hand corner. And if you come in here now, you're going to go to setup. And under setup, we're going to have the system mode. 2 4K at 60, 4 4K at 30. I'm going to start with 2 4K at 60s. So at this point, I can now change the names of the destinations. Uh, to do so, I can double click them. Uh, program 1, program 2 is default, but maybe you want to call it projector or LED wall. You can also change the output resolution. You have a wide variety of output resolutions all the way up to 3840, 2400, which is really, really cool. Uh, and then, of course, all the 4Ks and everything down below. Now, you are going to notice that the SDI port is split from the HDMI port. Uh, that will only work if you're doing a uh, resolution that works as a SMPD resolution, so 1920, 1080, 3840, 2160. If you do a odd VESA based resolution, then of course it would not work on the SDI output connector. And you are given a dedicated multi viewer as well, which that too can go all the way up to 4K. Nice. So we see the pre configuration, and just like everything else in Event Master, you can rename the inputs. So rather than HDMI input one, you can call it PowerPoint, graphics, keynote, camera, blah, blah, blah. But let's go down to the programming page. Uh, so I did add my source thumbnails that I always do just for fun. I just put them in randomly and arbitrarily. And you're going to see that things are already configured for you. The whole name of the game with PDS is supposed to be user friendly. So right now I have um, sources on my screens and I'm able to drag in new sources, make sure that the destinations are armed and then I can hit all trans to transition these up to screen. Hold, let me move my smiling face out of the way. I'll go over here. Yay. So let me do that again. So if I want to switch between, let's say, camera one, I can drag that into the preview screen, make sure the destinations are armed, and hit all trans. Now you're going to see that right now program two is on the left, program one is on the right. Uh, up at the very top, I can reorder these tabs by dragging and dropping them. Now notice how I did that. I dropped the tab on to where I wanted to go. A little finicky, so if I try to drag it to the full left, it won't work. You're going to drag it on top of where you want it to go. Now, like all of that master tool set systems, if I want to switch just one screen, I can deselect the destination, I can change the source, and now I'm able to swap this screen destination by itself. Or, of course, I can have them both selected, and I can switch those there as well. And then, of course, I can make all my presets as I want. So the number one tech support call I get with PDS is how to deal with the layers, and more importantly, how could I do a pip? Uh, you're going to notice uh, on the configuration page that there is one layer assigned. That cannot be changed. That is your layer. Enjoy it. However, we can do a still as a background. We'll talk about that later. So you got your one layer. Now note, though, this is a mixing layer. This is a mixing layer. So we can do picture in pictures, but we have to be very uh, mindful of our resources. So, if I were to try to change the layer type by going to the Adjust tab, notice that's going to say splitting the mixer cannot be done if the layer is in use on a locked program. That is correct. If you're going to be working with pips, you need to set them up first, or be dealing with a background. But we're going to set them up first. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clear out my preview. Send that to screen, and I'm going to clear out my program. 
Now, when I select the layer, you're going to see I can change the layer mode from mix to single. Mix to single. So these are no longer mixing layers. We take the A, B, and tie them together. You now have two distinct layers, meaning I can now take a new source and drop it in on the screen. Same with over here. Now this one goes behind it. Uh, the Z order is takes a little, a few minutes to get used to on the PDS. Honestly, it's just easier to reassign the layers. And now I can create my picture-in-picture -picture look, and I'm going to store this as a preset. I'm going to call this pip look one, and now I can swap that. Now that said, what happens now if I were to try to change the source of the pip? Notice it's not going to let me. That's not a mistake. This is correct because this is a single non-mixing layer. So if I want to change the pip out, the next act is to actually clear this layer back into preview, and now I can change the source out. So this is a very manageable workflow. Just the idea is you have to be very mindful of what you're doing. So when I build my presets, um, I should probably build a clear pip preset. So I'm going to call this no pip. It's probably not a good name for it. I'll probably honestly just call it PowerPoint 1. But the takeaway is if you put a pip on screen, your next action needs to be remove the pip. Now there are, of course, workarounds behind this. If I were to put this look on screen, and if I were to unlock the program, now I can actually change the look of the source. It is going to be a cut, you're not going to be able to dissolve it, but this does allow me a little bit more flexibility. Uh, especially if you're programming with a controller or a stream deck or anything like that, this isn't so bad. Now just to really reiterate and hammer down this concept of uh, uh, non-mixing layers, single layers, look, if I lock, unlock the program, and when, I, when a pip moves in preview, it moves in program. So pips can definitely be done on the PDS 4K. However, you just have to take a few extra minutes, check your workflow, check your presets, make sure all your presets flow into one another, and then more importantly, you need to let your stage manager, whomever's calling the show, know that you do have to go in a particular order. If a pip comes on, the pip must come off. So I'm now going to change my system mode to four 4K 30s. And we said this now opens up the system in a brand new way. I now have four destinations that can each be up to 4K at 30. So I'm going to make one of them. Oh, let's do. I'll do 30, 40, 21, 60 at 2997. And then I could have HD, HD, HD. So right now, default again, the SDI is linked to the HDMI, and that will follow blindly. Um, in fact, yeah, it looks like so. Okay, so the program one, program two are linked together. So, so do note that as I changed program one A, one B now follows with it. So not a biggie. Just deal with that. Uh, looks like my thumbnails are unassigned. Let me just assign a few just to have a little bit of fun. These are pure, random, arbitrary thumbnails at this point, by the way. So, same rules apply. If I want to assign a pip, I need to split the layer. Easiest way is to clear up my system, change my layer from single mode, and now I can deal with a picture-in-picture. So for those who are really paying attention, notice that these are now dual link layers because yes, 3840 at 2997 or 30 is a dual link resolution. And away we go. With the multi viewer, you're going to notice that it is pre configured for you in a nice, fun way. Uh, we give you um, one of the default looks here is all your preview and programs on here. Uh, this can, of course, be customized, so feel free to make this whatever you need it to be. So if you want to see all your inputs, uh, you can do so. If you want to see your previews and programs. So what another fantastic reason that the PDS 4K is just a really, really cool box. I didn't even touch on the Dante. Just note that we do support Dante audio. Um, 
when you go into the program mode, you're going to notice that the audio can follow the video. Audio channels will be set per program connector. Um, and then I believe we set them per, yes, we set them on the input as well. So right now I have two active audio channels assigned to each input. Really, really, really cool. So uh, a lot of people dismiss the PDS4K as a small box, but nah, no, 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 this is a really, really cool box. So I do hope that this helps shed some light on some information, uh, hopefully clears up the PIP element. That's uh, just a quick little down and dirty tutorial for the PDS4K, but I hope you really, really enjoy it and you have some fun with it out in the field. Thanks.